understanding and controlling depth of field is key to taking good pictures. Here I have this really fantastic looking natural scene with these freshly cut logs full of texture, a little bit of colour on them, some really interesting light over the top, and then it falls back into this nice kind of bucolic natural looking scene in front of us. The problem is most mobile phones produce images with big depth of field, which means everything is in focus all at the same time, so it can be difficult for your audience to pick out exactly what they're supposed to be looking at. A great way to control depth of field is to bring your subject nearer to the lens. The nearer your subject is, the tighter depth of field is, and you're able to produce images which have a very defined and sharp subject, and which then drops off, your focus will drop off into the background, creating an interesting bokeh or bokeh effect, however you're supposed to say it, through the rest of the frame. So what we're going to do here is we're going to frame up there, and we're going to get our log nice and close to the front of the frame. The further back you are, the bigger depth of field is, and the more of your frame is gonna be in focus at the same time. Here, because I'm right up close to this log with this really interesting texture, you can see that focus starts off really soft and mushy, and then it sharpens up through the rest of the image, which isn't quite the effect that I want. Instead, I'm going to tap on the log right here at the front, nice and close to the camera, and as you can see, we're now sharp on the log, and then focus falls off through the rest of the frame in a really kind of quite pleasing way. The thing to remember is that whenever you tap to focus, you will generally also set exposure, which here, because I've tapped on quite a bright part of my log, is not quite looking the brightness that I want. Instead, once you tap on most phones, if you drag up and down, you can change how exposed your picture is. If you swipe up, you can see that we have these big highlights and overexposures on the log, which is really not what we're after. And as we come down, everything drops away a bit, the shadows darken down, you've got this area of black right down here at the bottom. We also put lots more colour and saturation into the sky, which looks much more interesting and is exactly the effect that I'm going for. Let's take a look at what I shot and see if we've filled the brief of taking a frame with good looking depth of field. This is the camera's first stab and it's really not my favourite. As you can see, we've got a spare cat in there that crept in when I wasn't looking. And also this very front of the log is totally defocused and the frame only picks up sharpness as we move towards the back. I'm also not a big fan of how I've trimmed the top off all of these trees. This is my next shot, and in terms of focus, it's a lot closer to what I wanted. I've tapped on the very front of this log here, which has sharpened that up, and then you can see that focus and sharpness falls off through the rest of the frame to these nicely defocused trees in the background. I'm still not crazy about the composition because I've trimmed the very top of these trees here, which lacks, for me, a bit of structure, and we're also wrong in terms of exposure. The very brightest parts of our log here are overexposed, they're kind of bleaching out in the sun and there just isn't the tones that I want there to be in there. This is my favourite attempt. As you can see, we've got focus exactly right here on the very front of this log and then sharpness drops off through the rest of the frame to these nicely defocused trees in the background. It's a really pleasing, quite artsy effect. What I also like is that these trees have been left intact, complete with tops, which makes the picture feel a bit more structured and kind of compositionally sound. The other thing that I really like is that these logs are correctly exposed. If you look at where the sunlight is hitting them directly, we don't have those kind of really bright, bleached, overexposed white tones in there. We've got all of that earthiness and colour that was in the frame that I originally saw, which is why this frame is my favourite.